In nomine Patris sed Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Dominus Bohobiscum. Fratres Augustamus Pacata Nostra, Uratissimus at Sacra Mysteria Ceblanda. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Miserator nostri omnipotens Deus, et misis peccatis nostris, perduca nos vitam eternam.
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have let us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words, Blessed be Abram by God most high, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Verbum Domini.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Fabum Domini.
Dominus Fabescum. Lexia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they could go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. Verbum Domini. Today we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi. It's a celebration of the most holy body and blood of Jesus Christ. We celebrate the Eucharist, his real presence there, and the holy sacrifice of the Mass today. For us Catholics, we take the words of the Gospel, the institution account, the Last Supper, John 6, and Paul's writings, we take that very literally. It's not merely symbolic. It's not merely an imputed meaning by us who come together and give this meaning to the Eucharist. No, we believe that a real change takes place, that the bread and wine are transubstantiated, the substance, the inner reality of the bread and wine are changed. It's a permanent change. We keep the Eucharist in tabernacles after mass under lock and key. It's a real permanent change that we can come and adore him outside of mass. We can come and spend time in his presence. We can draw strength. This this bread for the journey can support us along the way. And today the church chooses for the readings and cycle C, the year, year C that we're in, the multiplication of the loaves. We see in Luke's gospel here, he's performing miracles, big crowd is following to a deserted region. He's preaching the kingdom of God, we're told that. And the people, as the day goes on, at the end of the day, they're hungry. So the disciples, of the 12, their solution is that to dismiss the crowd, send them away. Let them go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodgings and provisions, for we are in a deserted place. And Jesus says, give them some food yourselves. They say, where are we gonna find the money to, to buy food for all these people. They were coming up with a a rational, logical solution. Send them away. We can't handle it. 
The miracle of the multiplication of loaves occurs in all the Gospels. It's twice in Mark. Only the miracle of the resurrection and this miracle is in all the Gospels. And in some of the accounts, he uses a specific language. He says he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them. This we see at the institution narrative. In fact, this is the only other place that we see these four verbs, the taking, the blessing, the breaking, the giving. Church fathers all saw this as a prefigurement of the Eucharist. It's connected to it. It's so important. It's in all the Gospels. And it reminds us of the events of Exodus, where they lived on the manna in the desert. They're in a deserted region. They have no food. God rains down manna from heaven that they could eat just enough for that day. We need, especially in a desert, we need bread for life. We have an absolute need for it. And they organized the people, they set them down in groups of 50. This was done in Exodus as well, and organizing the, the tribes and putting leaders over them. So Jesus is the new Moses, leading us on a new Exodus, giving us a new manna, a new exodus to a heavenly life, a new exodus to an eternal life, not just freedom from slavery and bondage and the captivity of, of Egypt, that's a great and wonderful thing to a new promised land. He's the new Moses, a new exodus, a new departure from sin and death to eternal life. He's more than Moses, he's the son of God. This kind of life only comes from God. The human solution is to go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions and buy some food. That's this world's solution. He wants to give us something more than we can even imagine. And it's hard for us to anticipate, but he says, to the 12, you give them something to eat. What does he say later in Luke's gospel at the Last Supper when he institutes the Eucharist? Do this in remembrance of me. The church believes at that moment they are ordained to confect the Eucharist, to give them this true bread from heaven not just an earthly food, but the bread of angels. And in doing so, he's also giving us a pledge of future glory. That's one of the titles of the Eucharist, the pledge of future glory. He's giving us eternal life in the midst of our present life. We have as Christians, as Catholics, who feed on the body and blood of Christ, we have a hope that should characterize our whole existence, that we're experiencing a beautiful transformation from within. The work of our redemption is being carried out. Yeah, I have a hope of future glory because I receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. I, see his res I receive his resurrected body. I receive the medicine of immortality. Yeah, I have, a, I have a hope for a future glory. I have a hope for a better world, a transformation of, a, of the world that's coming in Jesus Christ at his second coming. He's gonna transform the world, offer it to his Father. I have that hope because I see it in the Eucharist. I have hope for eternal life. We have these hopes that can't be fulfilled by our own powers. We try to find earthly bread, more earthly bread. I need faith, faith in God. It's the mystery of faith that we receive. This kingdom that Jesus is preaching about to the people 
cannot be forced by human efforts. It's not within our power to draw it down here to earth. It is God's kingdom. When we do his will, it is near us. We're living in that kingdom when we do his will. In that sense, it's embedded in time with the coming of Jesus through the incarnation. And the Eucharist is the expression, the continuation, the logic of the incarnation continued in our life. The kingdom comes from above. We're headed for something more, for eternal life. That the Eucharist is the new and everlasting covenant where he pledges himself as the bridegroom to us, the church, as his bride. That he lays down his life for us on the cross. We see in marriage the two becoming one flesh. He gives us his flesh that we can have communion with. We receive communion, right? We're receiving his flesh and blood. That that everlasting covenant is solidified, made new, is activated, is realized. And marriage is permanent. His bond to us is permanent, irre irrevocable. So yes, it's the pledge of future glory. So yes, it is our hope in this desert that we are traversing. That Jesus has passed from this world to the Father, and Christ gives us the Eucharist as the pledge of future glory with him. The Catechism says that participation in the Holy Sacrifice identifies us with his heart, sustains our strength, along the pilgrimage of this life, makes us long for eternal life, and unites us even now to the church in heaven, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all the saints. It's a participation, that's, a, that's the key word. That's, that's so unique to Catholicism. A real transformation, a real participation, sharing in the divine nature identifies us with his heart. We have union with all the saints in heaven. We have union with each other in Jesus Christ. He renews our heart, our heart that is so battered and torn by sin, by our personal sin, by the waywardness of our culture, by our media alone, right? How do we uh, the attachments of our heart. I need some medicine. I need some transformation. And I need it concretely. We have that in the Eucharist. Just to spend time in adoration purifies our hearts. It makes our heart, identifies us with his heart, makes our hearts like thine. This is so vital. The sisters here, poor Clares of perpetual adoration, right? They have given their lives in a cloistered life to adoration. It speaks to us of our need, those of us living in the world, to spend some time in loving converse with him, to experience that presence, that transformation, that renewal. If by our communion with Christ at the altar we are filled with every heavenly blessing and grace as we say in the Eucharistic prayer and the Eucharist is also an anticipation of the heavenly glory that we've received the seed of grace that is to flower in glory the Didache in ancient church writing said may your grace come and this world pass away you ever feel like you're done with it? <laughs> May your grace come and this world pass away. In our funeral liturgy, we say, to share in your glory when every tear will be wiped away. I pledge of future glory is a consolation in our struggles and trials and sadness and our tears. There is no surer pledge or clearer sign of this great hope 
and the new heavens and the new earth and the Eucharist. Vatican II said, in the Eucharist, our redemption is carried out, anticipates the final transformation of the world. It is simply put, the food that makes us live forever in Jesus Christ. He tells the 12, you give them something to eat. He tells them at the, at the Last Supper, do this in remembrance of me. That these frail men, these simple, ordinary men who are arguing in the gospel about who is the greatest, who continually misunderstands, and who are sinners, who even abandon our Lord at, at Calvary, they are given this great power to confect the Eucharist, to give us the pledge of future glory, to give us the bread of heaven, the true bread, the medicine of immortality, the antidote of death, to offer the sacrifice of the mass where the work of our redemption is carried out. Today, we give thanks to God for that. We take a moment in our procession to adore him. And we want to be reminded to truly live a Eucharistic faith, to receive him, to adore him, and to remain with him.
we present our needs to our Heavenly Father who beckons us to his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In thanksgiving for the gift of the Most Holy Eucharist, the source and summit of the Christian life, we pray to the Lord. In reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference by which the Lord Jesus, present in the Eucharist, is offended. We pray to the Lord. Lord for special graces upon all fathers on this Father's Day, that they may imitate the Lord Jesus, who gives himself to others. We pray to the Lord. for the grace of conversion upon all Catholics to firmly believe in the real presence and to allow themselves to be set on fire by the Holy Spirit during this Eucharistic revival in the United States. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor clares of perpetual adoration, that their silent and eloquent witness of their life and love for our Eucharistic Lord shine brightly to the ends of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have died, especially our families, friends, and benefactors, that they may soon see God's face, face to face, and their eternal inheritance. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Merciful Father, we trust that you hear these petitions and those within our hearts. We thank you in advance for answering these petitions and those within our hearts. We thank you especially for the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus, present in the most holy Eucharist, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
Orate fratres, o mea macvetrum sacrificium, ecta tabli fido podem patrem omnipotentem. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Dominus vahobihiskum. Et cum spiritum cordha. Sagahamus Domino de Honostro It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium feed hei.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who those sinners, open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritu Sancti, omnes honore gloria, Per omnia secula seculorum. Precepti salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati aldehemus dicere Pater noster qui es in celis sanctificetur nomen tuum ad viniat Nos quesumus domini ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordia tui adiuti, et ab acato simos semper liberi, et ab omni patribatione securi, expectantes beatum spem, et ab entum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Amen. 
Domine Jesu Christe, quidedixia apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meum do vobis, ne respicias pacata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tuae, aem quae secundum voluntatem tuam, paci fir quae quadanate digneris, qui vivis regnas in secula seculorum. Pax do homini sit semper vobiscum. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tole pacata mundi, beate qui ad cenum agne vocate sunt. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tres subtectum meum, sed tantum dic verbo, et sinabitur anima mea.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever.
Panem de celo prestitis dies. Oremus, Deus qui nobis sub sacramentum mirabili, passionis tue memoriam reliquisti, tribue quesumus, ita nos corporis et sanguinis tui sacra misteria venerari, ut redemptionis tue fructum in nobis jugiter sensiamus, Qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. 